But in this video, we're going to be talking about integrity. Now, for me, growing up, I just happened to have a role model of what I thought of as integrity in my world, which was my own dad. My dad was just a guy who kind of said what he meant and meant what he said. And there was a sort of a simplicity to him. It wasn't sophisticated. I don't think he got there by working on himself. It just, you know, it may have just been something that a lot of people grew up in the Depression, grew up in the World War II era had. But in his case, it, it showed up not just in the way he was with us, but in the way he was in business. And my favorite story about my dad was that early in his, in his, his business career, he, he used to basically, my dad drilled long holes in bits of metal. And the longer, the, the bigger the piece of metal, the longer hole he could drill, the happier he was. And it turns out that has a lot of practical applications, including applications like my dad designed and built the legs to the lunar module that landed on the moon. We actually had a spare lunar module leg that we kept the spare key to the house under in our garage growing up. And it also had military applications. So my dad was a, a contractor for the military for many years. And when he first was, his first big project with the military, they'd done a deal and, and you know, they'd negotiated the deal. And my dad actually went down to meet with some high up, I think it was a colonel who had negotiated the deal. And, and, and when he sat down, the colonel said to him, well, uh, Al, uh, we've been looking at these numbers and uh, I'm afraid, I know we agreed this, but uh, we're, we're going to have to cut your, your, your resources in half and your time in half. You're going to have to deliver the same amount uh, in, in, in half the time uh, for the same money. And my dad got so upset that it, we, in this guy's office, he, he picked up a chair and threw it across the room. Now, my dad, I never saw him violent. So like even that story sounds out of character, but he just, you, you know, he was so taken aback. And apparently the colonel was so taken aback that he said, ow, ow. I was just negotiating. But see, in my dad's world, you did what you said, you said what you did. He didn't understand any other way. So I just kind of naturally inherited that conditioning. Now, that served me in pretty good stead because I tended to show up on time and do what I said I would do. And when I first moved to Los Angeles, I found out that's a competitive advantage in parts of the world. I remember the first job I showed up on here, somebody came about an hour and a half late and, and, and I was saying, oh God, it held up production. I thought this is gonna be a nightmare. They're gonna scream at him. And the guy came in and said, oh man, sorry, I flaked. And to my amazement, the, the head of production said, oh, okay. Like that was a legitimate excuse. <laughs> and it was so foreign to me. But the thing was, even though I came by it honestly, even though I sort of got a natural sense of integrity from, from growing up around my dad, in a way I was, I was doing the right thing for the wrong reason. I was kind of just living out my condition. I was kind of just trying to be a good person. So I had integrity because I thought integrity was what good people had. And it became a psychological issue for me because if I didn't do what I said I did, I felt like I wasn't just letting someone down, I was betraying them. I was a bad person because good people have integrity. I was betraying my father because my father would hate it if I did, didn't do something that I said I was going to do or I said I was going to do something and didn't do it. So it was the right thing, but it was for completely the wrong reason and therefore it became a source of stress instead of a source of strength. Because integrity, so my dad worked with metal. Well, when you take metals and structures, integrity is a structural metric. In other words, when something has structural integrity, it has a solidity. You can rely on it. You can safely put pressure on it and it will bear the weight. It will hold up to the pressure. That's what integrity actually relates to. That's where the word comes from. And so when you have integrity, what that means is that you can handle responsibility the weight of responsibility, you're made for it because there is a structural integrity to the way you do what you do. It's a practical thing, not a psychological one. A piece of metal that can hold weight is not a better piece of metal from a moral point of view than a piece of metal that can't bear weight. Integrity is not a moral issue, it's a structural issue.